Woody Taylor was the only lot officer left with the company. He led the troops to the crest of the hill, fighting as a rifleman himself. The Chinese were on the run, and battalion ordered Baker 1-7 to keep after them. The troops were frozen and exhausted, but Woody pushed them on. Late in the day, they reached their objective. With their small number, they set a tight perimeter on the high ground, overlooking the gap in the road that the engineers would bridge the next day. So they get that target secure, they get that hilltop, and now they're overlooking the gap where the engineers are going to build that bridge, and they set into a security perimeter. Woody Taylor put the weary company on 50% watch against the enemy assault he knew would come in the dark. It was the coldest night that the men had yet endured, a reported 30 degrees below zero. The wind howled at them in every direction. All through the unbearably cold hours until dawn, Taylor and Sergeant Richard moved from man to man to assure that no one froze to death. A detail of Korean soldiers who had been attached to the army arrived to bolster the perimeter, but most of them filtered away during the night. Several times, Marines heard the enemy moving around their lines in the darkness, but no attack came. Woody put out patrols early in the morning, before light. Within a hundred yards of the line, they found frozen dozens of frozen Chinese soldiers whose feet and hands were frozen to ice. The extreme cold had been on our side, holding back the attack. On the next day, Woody Taylor brought the remnants of the company down from the hills, marched them across the bridge and into the shelter of the town of Chin Hong Ni. Their battle ended there. Sergeant Richard took roll call. His final count was 27 men. Twenty. Seven men. And that is, that's out of the original 200 plus men of the company. And then on top of that, another 100 replacements that filled their ranks in this battle. So that's 300 men and only 27 remained. 27. 